Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to European Truck Simulator 2. And welcome to Stavanger, Norway. Stavanger? Stavanger. So we are we're still in our DAF. And I went ahead and uh, I had, well, I bought this garage. And the reason I bought it is I wanted to haul some of the big Scandinavian doubles. And what I found is, like if we had, we were in Stavanger. Man, I hope I say, I'm saying that right. We were here, right? But our garage is in Bergen, back up the coast. And to get hooked up, we would have needed to fast travel to that garage, right? And then, concentrating. Then hook up the trailer and either drive back down the coast, which I would have done off camera, or try to teleport and the problem I have with teleporting is because this trailer is so big it can sometimes cause some problems when you teleport so I thought the easiest answer was oh look at that thing oh look at it it's magnificent I thought the easiest thing was just to buy this garage and we have the money we still have we had almost a million euro and now we're we're very quickly back to having a ton of money so yeah this is this is going to be today's episode. We're going to we're going to pick up a cargo and try to haul it. And when I say try to, this thing is a handful. Like even getting it out of the getting it out of the parking lot at our garage is going to be tricky. But we ain't as scared. It's also it's about 4 a.m. and I did sleep. I'm there we Go. Set the brake. Get the back axles up. Okay. So let's take a look and let's find a job. Uh, we want to head approximately northeast. Is that right? Approximately northeast. So here we go. Uh, it's pretty northeast. I don't know. How do you feel about heading up into this area? I would like to if we can. But we'll. Try to find a good one. Uh, there are a ton of cargoes going out of this town, so that's a good thing. We want... Ah, there we go. Ah, okay. That is exactly what we want. 16 tons. Atlantic Cod Filet. I like when it works out that way. I, I don't like when you pick a cargo and it has like nothing to do with the town that you're in or the area that you're in. But I think that's very fitting. Okay. And it pays 26 grand. We don't really need money. Yeah, we're back up to 650. 651,000 euros. So we don't really need money, but I don't know. You just always want to take a good job. Okay. So let's do it. How far we got to go? One kilometer. It's right around the bend. Okay. So now first problem is getting this thing out of the driveway. And I guess really the only way to do it, I mean, we could try to go around backwards, but I think we, I think we just want to go straight. Not straight, straight. You know what I mean. I think we just want to go to the left. And I really, I don't, I don't want to say I don't know if we can do this, but this is, this trailer is a handful. I've driven with it before and it's fun, but it is, it's not nice. So we're okay there. We're okay there. Oh, look at that thing. It's fantastic. I love it. Okay. So we are rolling. And there's going to be a lot of concentrating this video. I have to say. I try, you know, I try to talk at you, but man, this is, this is going to be very exciting. No traffic, thankfully. But we can do this. Wipers on. And we want, okay, so we gotta make a right here. And 
no traffic again, thankfully. Now the traffic volume does decrease at night and early morning, does it not? So this is probably a good time for us to be leaving the city. Right, and I don't know how bright it's going to get. I've I slept specifically so we could do a daytime video. We're going to get a ticket here. Yep, it's okay. Made it, okay. I slept specifically so we could do a daytime video because we have been doing so many nighttime videos. But with the frosty winter weather mod, it never gets super, super bright. So we'll just, you know what I mean? We'll just deal with it as it comes. But it should be a, a snowy, overcast day in Scandinavia. I'm gonna let this car pass. And then try to swing it around and in there. Set the brake. Let's see what we got. Where is our, is that it? That's the one, okay. And I will probably, yeah, let's just auto load it. And it may still clip us through a wall. I hope not, hope not, here we go. All right. Oh. how do we do? Not too bad, did we take any damage? Nope. Okay. Perfect. So, let's get that back on map if we need it. Let's pull this forward a little bit. Just to get it out of the wall. And we'll take a look. Right. Can we do it? I think we can do it? I bet we can do it. Let's do it. Uh, so it wants us to make a, ha, huh. it wants us to make a left out of here, but I think as when we left the driveway at the yard, I don't think that's a good idea. give it a try. Alright, here we go. Right. Okay. Step one. And we're rolling. And we'll probably do this in two episodes. Because it's a kind of a long trip and going through the mountains, it's going to be kind of slow with the weather. But you know how it goes. You know how it goes. You know what? It's all just trucking videos. At the end of the day, it's all just trucking videos. So if it takes one episode, two episodes, we're okay with that. So we got to go... I'm gonna make a right here. Okay. And I'm gonna cheat out. Ah, oh, perfect. If I can ever get us out on the highway, I'll talk to you. But in the meantime, I'm just like maximum concentration. Oh, this thing is ridiculous. I love it. And we, we're going 
in here now. Okay. Perfect. Made it. Approximately. Okay. I think we're going to be alright. So yeah, man. It's been... It has been an interesting gaming week for me. No doubt. And I, I have done a couple things that... I wouldn't say that I had like decided I would never do but I've done a couple things that I really was not expecting to do and one thing that I did which you know about is I I sort of unexpectedly and almost inadvertently got the division when it was on sale right after Christmas as a lot of people did I think because the division 2 is about to be released I think Ubisoft and Massive Entertainment. Oh, sir. Sir. Sir, you're killing me. There we go. I think Ubisoft and Massive were looking at it like, this is a great opportunity. Really? Did I go all the way past it? I guess I did. bit of jackknife. I was trying to swing that turn wide and I swung it so wide I went out past the sign. We're okay. We're okay. Oh, man. I don't know why this is fun. It's the weirdest thing. Gaming in general is is kind of crazy, but when you like unpack it a little bit and try to think like, why is this fun? I honestly I don't have an answer. I don't know why this is fun, but this is a, a riot, man. I definitely recommend it. And this is a uh, this is DLC. This is a mod. This is a mod, I think. This trailer pack. I don't even know. Too many mods. Anyway. I think Ubisoft and Massive were looking at it like, you know what, The Division 2 is about to be released. And once that happens, I think most games sort of drop off after their uh, successor is released. So this is kind of our, our last big marketing push for The Division, the original Division. And also... I think it's a great way to get people that have held out for two years, three years that the game has been out, three years in March. For people that have held out this long, it's like, let's make one final effort to get you on board the Division franchise, just as the next one is about to be released, and then ideally, right, you only get the first one to get you hooked enough to buy the second one when it's released. So from a marketing perspective, it makes perfect sense that they would do it that way. Let's squeeze a little bit more money out of this. And I don't mean that in a bad way when I say it. It sounds kind of, you know, like I'm being an ass, but I don't. Like, that's, that's what businesses do, man. If you got a product, you gotta, you got to get maximum profit out of it. And if you can put it on sale and get a few more customers right before you get to a point where really nobody's ever going to buy it again after the new one is released, good on you, man. That's, that's smart business. So that was, that was why I got it. I think that's why a lot of people got it. And I really, I haven't played an RPG, RPG game, almost said RPB. I really haven't played an RPG game for years and years and years. It has been a long time. And definitely fun. Uh, I said this last episode, it's more, it's more RPG than tactical shooter, but there's a, a shooting aspect to it. So it's fun. But then last week, all of last week was going to be one of these global event things, and there are drops. There's certain equipment available. Because it's an RPG, you got to get armor and weapons, just like uh, World of Warcraft or any other RPG. You've got you to level up your character and get good loot. And there's loot dropping during this global event week, they call it, that doesn't... Well, it does drop the rest of the, the year, but it drops with a lot more frequency during the global event. So I had to farm. I was grinding last week to the point where I really, I was 
spending all my gaming time in the division and I was able to uh, so their gear sets their, their combinations of armor and um, and different wearables just like an RPG you know you got your helm you got your you got your armor you got your greaves right you got your your whatever well they have combo sets where when you own uh, or when you equip multiple pieces from the same set gives you like extra bonuses and then on top of that there are sets that are classified so it's the same same named gear set it's just a higher level of that gear set and the same thing you get four or five if you get all six of them it unlocks like a lot more power in your setup so I was able to to put together like four of those five of those and I figure it would have taken me like months of gaming not at that intensity uh, farming is definitely not something I can do a lot of I know some people can do it like day after day week after week but for me it's like I can do kind of a little burst of it it's like trying to uh, trying to level up a car in a rally game you know I can I can bang out a bunch of rallies in an afternoon but after that I just want to go back to doing you know one one rally per session one rally per day rather than you know back to back to back so I was able to I estimate get you know months or or even maybe like a year of of stuff and really level my character up and what it's allowed me to do is I can now you know, because I was grinding and doing multiplayer um, co-op not PvP but because I was able to level up my character now I can play solo which is kind of what I wanted to do multiplayer has been this is the most multiplayer again the most multiplayer that I've played in years and I don't know man it's gaming is gaming is an interesting way to connect with people or not connect with them as the case may be but that's where I've been and uh, and it's been it's been a weird month for gaming well no I take that back it hasn't been weird it's been slow it's been very very slow but I anticipated January would be January is slow for a lot of businesses because nobody has any money and there's a lot of people on vacation so there's very often not a lot of business going on in January there's a lot of internal stuff going on budgets and housekeeping and inventory if you're in retail so there's that sort of stuff but it's the stuff that the public really doesn't see and so for for a lot of consumers in January businesses just go dark and it's really been you know the new pro mods isn't out yet but again people are on holiday you know and that's a as far as I know a volunteer operation so it's been really slow not a lot of news not a lot of new sims dropping not a lot of new DLC dropping it's uh, it's been pretty slow so I guess that was as good an opportunity as any to dive into the division and, and sort of uh, get deep into that game and I really do uh, I really do like it but I've really been continuing to reflect on uh, on well something happened I was in I was in multiplayer and somebody made a made a comment about you know you need to be doing this and I thought but that's not necessarily realistic and the game itself is not I mean it's based on a realistic premise which is you know, law enforcement in time of crisis but the game itself is you know there's boss monsters that you know take five minutes to kill it's not it's not at all a, a one shot one kill uh, Rainbow Six style, jeez, Rainbow Six style uh, tactical shooter. So I'm trying to play realistically because that's the way I play all Sims. And you know, the the tone that this person had, I'm not mad at them or anything. It, it, it's just a, it's just something that happened that got me thinking. But the the tone that they had was, you know, you're not you're not doing the thing that would be most effective in this situation and, and my thought was the thing that would be most effective in this situation is not realistic and it's also 
you're sort of um, gaming the game. You know, you're, you're almost not taking advantage of it, but you know what I mean. Like, there's certain... Like, in any game, in any game like that, any game with shooting, there are inevitably some AI pockets where, like, if you stand in this doorway, the AI characters will just walk past you with their backs turned and you can shoot them. As an example, every every shooting game has little windows like that. And it's just, you know, the limitations of AI and you playing the game enough to sort of discover those, right? And now you know where the, I don't want to call them vulnerabilities, but you're not actually, like, being better than the AI in the, in the context of whatever the the challenge or the conflict of the game is in this case you know it's good guys versus bad guys you're not actually being like better than the bad guys you just found a, a vulnerability in the ai and you take advantage of it call it an exploit call it, call it whatever you want and i think wow that's not really playing but that is winning and and reflecting on on the tone that this person had i thought you know this is this is how some people play games is they actually play them as they would if they were really playing them and I've been I've been really thinking about that this past week and you know what gaming means to different people and how for some people it's just moving their hands around a controller and making certain things happen on the screen and that's fine you know that's fine for them and they really dig it and then for other people you know you've got we're in truck sim right now you can find on on YouTube you can find people that have built their own like truck cabin to play the sim in. And I don't mean like a three monitor setup with one of those SKS shifters. I'm talking like they built like a like a plywood box to represent the cabin of a truck and they've got an air ride seat in it and they're right? They're really trucking. And that's totally cool. It really is. But they they are immersing themselves. They are pretending to be driving a truck. Right now, I'm pretending to be driving a truck, but it's sort of in a casual way. Well, different people take it more seriously. And then, well, if you play multiplayer on ETS, you know, some people don't take it seriously at all. They just like to go out and smash up trucks and troll and have a good time. And they are having a good time. They're just having a good time differently. So it's, it's interesting to see the different ways that people play games. It's fascinating stuff, man. People, I love them. I love studying people observing them they are a riot endless entertainment and i don't mean that in a bad way i'm not making fun of them because i'm certainly as entertaining <laughs> as entertaining as anybody else and when i say that i don't mean like you know entertaining like making videos and stuff like that i mean the the way that i'm making my way through life is certainly as flawed and imperfect and funny from a certain angle as anybody else's but that's a good thing we need to be able to laugh at ourselves i think that's really important if you can't look at your own life and laugh at your own struggles and vulnerabilities then you're no fun you're not a person i want to hang out with it's fun to be human it's fun to be imperfect and it's fun to figure shit out it really is and every time you figure something out you're sort of acknowledging that you didn't have it figured out before. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. It kind of cuts both ways. It's like to solve a problem, you had to have the problem to, be, to begin with. But you get what I'm saying. So, uh, I'm not getting the Division 2, though. There's no way my machine can play it. I, I think it looks great. I think the Division 1 looks great on my machine. But I went ahead and, just for kicks... I went ahead and kind of maxed some things out just to see what kind of frame rate I could get, and I can't. I cannot. There's no frame rate. It's just like slideshow. And in a game that quick and that intense with that much um, like response time and just unbridled violence, and everything needs to be super quick, and there's people trying to kill you, you can't. You can't have any kind of delay at all. So I know. When I first started playing Farm Sim, I was playing on my old laptop. Oh, loading tiles. I was playing on my old laptop, and uh, there, were, there were times when, with a lot of mods, when I was dipping into, like, the teens for frame rate. But it's Farm Sim. It's fine. It can make driving a little tricky sometimes if you get just a bit of controller lag. But 
for the most part, it was fine because nobody's trying to kill you on your farm. Or are they? No, they're not. But in in a tactical game, like you can't have those, even those like millisecond controller lags, you just can't have it. So I'm gonna keep the controller, the controller set, the graphic settings. I'm gonna keep the graphic settings that I have now, but there's no way I could ever run uh, a 2019 AAA next gen game. It just wouldn't happen. And I, oh man, I'm still, I'm not on the fence about my about my system. I know I need to upgrade. I know I want to upgrade. It's just, it's the money for one thing. And it's also, ah, what is that? Oh, okay. Oh, it's just a little, just a little tree texture error coming through the road. But I thought there was like a barrel in the, on the highway. Jeez, don't scare me game. So you get what I'm saying. You know, it's the money. It's the, uh, it's the fact that I just got this gaming laptop a year ago, and for for all intents and purposes, it works fine. I mean, I can't play, I can't play, you know, Ex Machina or something, but I I do all right. Can't barely see the road. Are we coming to a toll? Is this a toll or a frontier? It is a toll. Okay. So I have no complaints. But every, every system other than, you know, something that's three months old and absolutely state-of-the-art, I think, every system is going to have limitations. And that's fine. I guess it's just a cutoff for, you know, where, where do the limitations fall and what does that do for your gaming? And I think for me, other than, uh, other than new, new AAA games, I'm fine. But most of my Sims are a few years old. Uh, uh, no, I take that back. I take that back. I've got, I've got uh, new race Sims, uh, and everything seems to be holding up okay. I've, I'm running F1 2018. I'm running uh, MotoGP 18, and I can hold just about 60. I gotta find a sweet spot in the settings, you know, like always. But I can, I can hold at 60. So we're actually doing okay. Uh, getting out of town, I think, was the biggest deal with these trailers. And we made it out of town. So we are on the highway. So let's do this. Let's do this. We are at 28 minutes. So let's do this. Let's turn the wipers off first. Next good place we see to either park and sleep or park and get fuel. Or at least just park. Let's get in off the highway. And... You know what, I'm not gonna mess with my keyboard to bring up, ah, this is interesting. It's on the other side though. I would have needed to turn in back over our left shoulder. You see what I'm saying? To get around to there. Uh, I mean, maybe I could, you wanna try to make the left? Let's do it. Yeah, cause we're at 29 minutes, let's do it. Who knows where the next one will be? And 30 minutes is a perfect time to stop. So let's make this left in here. So this says no, no left turn in there. Let me try to flip it around. All right, it's, things have been going so good so far, but I'm gonna risk it. Okay, we're gonna make a big left turn in here and then we'll, uh, we'll call it for today.
It's a nice little tailback. Fantastic. Um, you know, we don't need fuel, but while we're here, why not? Alright. So. Lights off. Engine off. Set the brake. Put it in neutral. Let's get some fuel. We'll take a look at the truck and we'll call it. Right on. And we're at, uh, yeah, 31 minutes. So this, this worked out perfectly. Beautiful. Let's take a look outside. Oh, that is ridiculous. But in a good way. Cool. Right, we'll call it. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of European Truck Simulator. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.